Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 14th annual reading <coughs> of the Declaration of Independence here in City Hall. Um, I'm going to go uh, introduce my committee first so you can see who we are. I myself is the chair. Ann Thomas in the red shirt, she's my vice chair. Kathy Caparelli in the blue, raise your hand, Kit Kat, so we know who you are, they know who you are. She's one of my committee members. And Emily Murnane, she helps us out, she's from the Beacon Historical Society. So she's gonna come and she's gonna do a little spiel about who she is in a few minutes, but. And my, uh, <coughs> my two cake ladies, Sharon and uh, Joan, pop out of the back room, please. And let everybody say hi to you. Sharon and Joan is our refreshment, ladies. Thank you very much, ladies. Okay, you can. Thank you. Uh, okay. Can you take your Yeah. Yep. Give me one minute, folks. Thank you. I know. Okay, yeah, I know. Got to put my eyes on. Put my eyes on so I can see what Dennis Pavlock is talking about. Uh, at this time, I'd like you to turn off all electronic devices at this time. And um, we're going to uh, do a few things uh, out of order here for this event. And um, so at this time, I'd like you to please stand. For a moment of silence for our men and women <coughs> from Beacon, that's in our military, and around the globe. So a moment of silence for that, please, for them, please. Thank you. Please stay standing for a few more minutes. Um, as we're going to have Owen Skorowitz and his friends do the Pledge of Allegiance and then right after the National Anthem. So guys, you want to come around here? <coughs> and when you're ready. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the Excellent version I've ever heard in my entire life. Thanks, guys. Thank you. We have a, you can be seated, thank you. We have a short but brief uh, slideshow on, on, on Juneteenth. I wanted to include that. <laughs> so, Pete.
some awards we're doing this year. Um, I wanted to do this for our committee um, because I just believe it needs to be done. Uh, so we did that, we did that. Um, so if I can have Bernie Dillon in the back row to please come up front, please. Bernie Dillon, come on up to the front, please. Army veteran, Army veteran, he does a lot of good. We all do a lot of good, but I wanted to recognize him. <coughs> <coughs> the Army's motto is, no one left behind, is awarded to Bernie Dillon on this day, today. Bernie, congratulations. Thank you. Before I go any further, I inadvertently left out 14 years of congratulations, not on purpose, folks. Dennis Pellet does nothing on purpose. Our videographer, Pete Skorowitz, right here, folks. He, he does a nice slot show for us, puts it together. There he is there. Pete, thank you once again. And we have one more award. This person's probably gonna be surprised, but that's okay. Teresa Kraft, you wanna come up, please, son? <clears throat> the committee wants to recognize you for being the eyes and ears of the city. Oh, Maybe it's not official, but I know. thank you. Thank you for what you did. That's all right, thank you. At this time, I'd like to call our mayor up to recognize the city officials in the audience now. Thanks, Dennis. Um, so, hi everyone. Welcome to City Hall. Uh, I think I see a couple of electeds that I want to recognize. I think I see our county legislator, Yvette Valdez-Smith. Will you say good morning? Oh yeah, and then we have one council member, Molly Rose from Ward 1, Let's come say hi. Am I missing anyone? I think I'm not. All right, back to you. Thank you, Mayor. Yep. Um, now, what we'd like to do is We want to see how <coughs> how much you've been listening over the years and paying attention with some questions that I have. Uh, and I want to just ask some, and anybody can raise their hand. Uh, if you don't know it, a wrong answer still gets you the prize. We're not going to say you, we're not going to say you didn't know it. You can't have it. We're not going to say that. So let me ask the. First question, I need to see a show of hands, or a hand for this question, please. What is the first part of the Declaration of Independence called? There's a name for it. If anybody knows it, raise your hand and say it. John. Preamble. It is the preamble of the Declaration. That's, the, that's what it is called. It is the preamble. That is correct. Yes, yes, John, you have to wear that. Uh, who wrote the Declaration of Independence? Anybody know who wrote it? Do we know any? Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration. She has one, so she don't get another one. <laughs> the committee, that's right. That's good. That is correct. Um, how long did it take to write 
this document, it took, no one would know it. If, you, if you're guessing it's wrong, you're still going to get a, 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 a. Anybody want to take a, anybody want to take a, take a shot at it? You got, you got something to go. I do. Three weeks. That is close enough. <laughs> It took, it took 17 days to write this document. 17 days, so she was, she was, she was, she was right there. Okay. I was this person last year, so if you remember last year, you'll know who the answer to this question is today. Now, who was the youngest to sign the declaration? He was 26 years old at the time, but if you remember who I was last year, then that's the answer this year. And our mayor has his hand up. No. No, that is not correct. He was in his 20s, that is correct. His name, I was last year, I, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, we have somebody. No, wait a minute, did, 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 wait, did someone guess? Someone didn't guess, but no, wait. Hold on. No, it is not. John Adams. That's all right. <coughs> His name is Edward Rutledge. Oh, I dropped it. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Now this is that this is going to be an easy one. Because even I know this one. Who was the oldest to sign the document? Uh, I, I could give you a hint, but I think we have a raised hand over here. That is correct. All right, we only got a, we only got just a, just one or two more, and that's it. One more we got. Ah, oh, here it is. Okay. What date was it adopted and printed? Adopted and printed. On what date was it adopted and printed? That is correct to the man on the back. It was July the 2nd. It was adopted and printed. That is correct. That is correct. The man on the back gets a prize. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. Now we have some flags to give away. We got some flags. Uh, I think that might be it. Uh, oops. We have some flags. Uh, oh, I got another one. Okay, hold on. We got one more, two more left here. Uh, I did a little research on why George Washington could not be here at Philadelphia for the, uh, the reading of it. Because the second, the second Continental Congress convened on May 10th, 1775, and George Washington was a voting delegate from Virginia. They prepared him for a new assignment and took command of the Revolution forces on July 3rd, 1775, and didn't get back in time, so he ended up reading to his troops in New York on July 4th, 1776. So that's where George Washington was, if anybody having dinner tonight and someone says, honey, where was George Washington? Now, well, now you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 okay, last one. Um, can anybody name the, before they were states, they were colonies. Can anybody name a few of the colonies that were the 13 colonies at the time? Can anybody throw a few of them out there? Even if you say one or two. Who said that? That is correct, Judy. Judy Stella, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, thank you. Okay, so much of that. Well, where am I at? Uh, okay, uh, just another comment, and then we're ready to go. Uh,
in an early version of the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson said this about it, rallied against the slavery about, about, about uh, slavery. So I wanted to throw that out there to you. He was, he was against slavery. He's also credited with calling America the USA. Another little comment, tidbit. And we're ready to get on with our reading. So these history questions, these questions pop up all the time, so you never know when they're going to come at you again. So um, at the end, we're going to have some games for the youth, so please stay around for that. And there's raffles to be had for these bouquets. Oh, right here we have. Um, so we're going to ask our esteemed mayor, who's going to read the entire declaration this year. I had never had one reader before. It's always been two to, between two and three readers, but I'm okay with it because he does a good job. So, Mayor, come on up and start it off for us. Thank you, Dennis. Yep, there you are. Oh, you want to that one? Can I use that one? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. All right. So, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm usually sitting up here. Um, so, first, uh, let me just do some thank yous, right? So. Uh, for a Emily Murnane, who is uh, Madam Brett, I'm told today, uh, and Ann Thomas, Kathy Caparelli, and of course for uh, Dennis Pavlock. Thank you so much for doing this for 14 long years. Thank you. Uh, second, um, um, this is a, might be a disappointment for some. Uh, last year, uh, my wife and I uh, brought baklava and coffee. This year, it's just coffee. Um, but there is cake, and we thank uh, you know, Kelly Campbell, who uh, everyone calls the cake lady, and our ladies in the back who are helping out on that, so thank you. And then just the last bit, uh, those of you who know me know I'm a, a history buff. And uh, I had a friend from um, law school come up, and we actually did a, a little Revolutionary War tour um, in the Hudson Valley a few weeks ago. And, and uh, our, my wife, Elizabeth, joined me for some of it. We went to Fort Ticonderoga. And if you recall, Fort Ticonderoga um, was taken by the Americans in 1775, and then Knox um, brought of like the Fort Knox headquarters, um, hauled 50-some cannons from Fort Ticonderoga in Vermont, uh, portaging down uh, Lake George and the Hudson, and then somehow getting them across Massachusetts to put them up on the Dorchester Heights um, over Boston, which caused the British to evacuate Boston. That was in 1775. They, f they sailed out to Halifax. They came back in force in 1776. But we went there. It was a very cool place. We also went to Saratoga. Uh, and then for those of you who know the Saratoga battlefield, uh, that was the first um, major victory uh, of us, of the Americans, against the British. And it was the first time that the British Army had been defeated. Um, and the surrender of Burgoyne, and I think it was 5,000-some troops, was the signal to France to enter the war. And so a tremendously important uh, battle for us. Um, and as those of you who know uh, about Yorktown, we needed the French for that one too. So, and then the last place we went, we went to uh, West Point. But instead of touring the grounds uh, with my spouse, because she used to work there, uh, we actually went up to try to see Fort Putnam, uh, which was up in the heights of West Point. And then above Fort Putnam to defend that was a place called Redoubt 4 and Redoubt 3. Um, and it was very cool to observe. The British uh, got through the chain the first time, burned Kingston, uh, if you know this, uh, but never got to Burgoyne. And that's one of the reasons why Saratoga was a victory for us. So I just wanted to pass that along. Um, I'm going to read uh, the, the declaration now without further ado. Um, there are a couple of words that I may stop to define since they're unusual words. Uh, and if I lose it once in a while, just, you know, give me a break, right? Because it's very cool. Um, thank you for letting me do this. The unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. When in the course of human events, 
it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers uh, in such form as to shall seem most likely to affect their safety and their happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations, there's the first one, usurpations. So that one means taking of authority, right? So like if someone said, I'm the mayor now, right? That's a usurpation. So it's taking of the authorities that were reserved to the people of the colony. So when a long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object, evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of those colon these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present King of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having a direct object, the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. So, most of the declaration is a list of grievances. Uh, in fact, there's 27 of them. And this was done to justify the actions that were being taken and to just demonstrate why the king was violating the laws of Great Britain, which weren't, didn't seem to be applying to the colonies. Here they go. Mm -hmm. He has refused his assent to laws, the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained. Uh, and when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend to them. Over there. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people unless those people would relinquish the right of representation in the legislature a right inestimable to them and formidable to tyrants only. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing with manly firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. He has refused for a long time after such dissolutions to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers incapable of annihilation have returned to the people at large for their exercise. The state remaining in the meantime exposed to all the dangers of invasion from without and convulsions within. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for that purpose obstructing the laws of, for naturalization of foreigners refusing to pass others to encourage migrations hither and raising the conditions of new appropriations of lands. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. He has made judges dependent on his will alone for their tenure of their offices and the amount and payment of their salaries. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. He has kept among us, in times of peace, standing armies without the consent of the legislatures. 
He is affected to render military, the military independent of and superior to the civil power. He is combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our Constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation for quartering large bodies of armed troops among us, for protecting them by a mock trial from punishment for any murders which they should commit on the inhabitants of these states, for cutting off our trade with all parts of the world, for imposing taxes on us without our consent, for depriving us in many cases of the benefits of trial by jury, for transporting us beyond seas to be tried for pretended offenses, for abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, that's a reference to Canada, establishing therein arbitrary government and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies. That was number 20, there's seven more to go. For taking away our charters, for abolishing our most valuable laws and altering fundamentally the forms of our government for suspending our, our own legislatures and declaring them invested with power to legislate for all us in all cases whatsoever. He has abdicated government here by declaring out us out of his protection and waging war against us. He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coasts, burnt our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. He, has, he is at this time transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death Death, desolation and tyranny are already begun with circumstances of cruelty and perfidy. Perfidy is um, deceit or untrustworthiness, scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy the head of a civilized nation. He has constrained our fellow citizens taken captive on the high seas to bear arms against their country, to become the executioners of their friends and their brethren, or to fall themselves by their hands. And here's the last one. He has excited domestic insurrections amongst us and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages, who known rule of warfare is undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury a prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. Nor have we been wanting in attentions to our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislature to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of our circumstances of our immigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity, and we have conjured them by our ties of our common kindred to, to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They too have been deaf, deaf to the voice of justice and our consanguinity. Uh, that means kinship. Uh, it means common ancestry, consanguinity, same blood. We must therefore acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies in war, in peace, friends. We therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress assembled, appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, do in the name and by authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these co United Colonies are, and of right ought to be, free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British Crown, and that all po political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be dissolved, and that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, to conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and to do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Thank you.
Okay, very well done, Mayor, once again. Very well done. I'm going to have you come up, Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to have our guest. Uh, she's here every year, our Emily Bernane with the Beacon Historical Society. She's going to give a, a little, uh, uh, a little about that and then who she is today and a little spiel about who she is and who she was back when. Emily, it's you. Thank you, Dennis. Good morning, everybody, and happy Independence Day. Um, could I just get another little brief round of applause for the Declaration of Independence? Thank you very much. My name is Emily Murnane. I'm a trustee of the Beacon Historical Society and curator of the Madame Brett Homestead, which is uh, owned and operated by the Milzinga chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution. Um, I am here today in costume as Madame Katharina Brett, who, uh, for lack of a better term, is more or less the founder of the city of Beacon. She was one of our first European settlers, and her house still exists today. It was built in 1709, and you can still visit it. It's a museum that's open for tours, and actually our next tour will be next Saturday, uh, second Saturday, that's July 13th, from 1 to 4 o'clock, so come on by and you can learn a little bit about the house. Uh, in theme for Independence Day, um, the House did play a role in the American Revolution. Uh, Madame Brett herself passed away before the Revolution started. However, her family continued uh, owning the House until the 1950s, and during the time period of the American Revolution, they played host to several uh, key figures in the Revolution, including George Washington, Alexander Hamilton, uh, the Marquis de Lafayette, and Baron von Steuben, who started the Continental Army. So if you would like to hear some stories about these individuals and their involvement with your hometown and your local history, then um, please do stop by the homestead and uh, hear these stories firsthand for yourself. And uh, thank you very much for having me. Okay, uh, at this time, I'm just gonna do a quick reminder, then we're gonna have Break for Cake. That should be a song, Break for Cake. <laughs> um, there's raffles back here. We got the red, white, and blue bouquets we're raffling off this year. Um, so Kathy's waiting for you to come back and get some raffles. But before we break for cake, I want to ask Emily if she would help me open up this canvas because I have a message not only for locally, but around the world. And this is a surprise that no one knows about. I did this on my own, and I wanted to show it today. So Emily, if you would help me do that, that would be great. Thank you for that. again with just my children and my wife I thank my lucky stars to be living here today
Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away And I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the ones who died Who gave that right to me And I'd gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, and from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston, from New York to LA. Well, there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say, Slide.